Welcome back everyone to a land of fire and ice. Mostly ice in our case though, but yeah, a little bit of fire as you can see over there at the creeper farm. Uh, we've been spending a little bit of time here. We've gotten quite a good amount of gunpowder, but this is still not enough, believe it or not. We actually need even more gunpowder to power our ambitions at total chaos. So we got to make this thing bigger. I think we're going to make a second creeper farm right here. In this area, directly next to the first one, and then maybe a third one and a fourth one right here, depending on if we have the resources like the cobblestone and the glass and stuff that we need to make it. Um, but, yeah, that's the plan. Expand the creeper farm, get even more gunpowder, and also stop the raiders over there from continuing to raid this area, because there's a l we've seen like three or four patrols here uh, in like the last like hour or so. So, yeah, anyways, going to make this happen. Let's do it. So let's build a creeper farm real quick. I'm going to show you this because each and every one of these is exactly the same. So first step is obviously just place down water like this. Then you build up your collection system underneath. Then you start putting down glass in a very particular arrangement. I believe this farm was initially by Nembom, but it was modified slightly by a guy called Shulkercraft. There'll be a link to this farm in the description. So there's 10 layers to the farm in total. And then once you get to the top, of course, you have to go all the way back down to the bottom and put in your... Uh, trap doors so the only creepers spawn inside of the farm uh, that's why we don't have zombies and skeletons spawning because of these trap doors then it's simply a matter of putting a clock on the top and covering it up and we're done ladies and gentlemen welcome to creeper valley hermit craft we have now four you can see here creeper farms where creepers can spawn on the spawning pads and only creepers can spawn on the spawning pads which is pretty cool and they get yeah, pushed off by the water, and they burn on top of the campfires, as that guy is doing right there. So, yeah, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. This farm is now complete, and this should produce a lot more gunpowder now. Before, we were getting about 1,400 gunpowder per hour. Um, now, I think we're going to be getting close to, like, five, six, eight thousand 8,000 gunpowder per hour, depending on how many people are on and, uh, like, what the day-night cycle is like when we... Uh, are around this area, but yeah lots and lots more room for creepers to spawn here now So let's get on up here. We're gonna turn this thing on and we're gonna get a whole lot of gunpowder so just flick these four levers on and then That should start all the water cycling down below let's Just make our way over here and see yep. Okay creepers getting pushed off here creepers pushed off there very good, and there, and there was no creepers over here for some reason, I don't think, because, yeah, I don't think it, uh, they had spawned yet, oh, here they come, okay, yep, very good, pushed off, pushed off, fantastic, okay, that's what we like to see, alright, now we just go up here to the AFK spot, and we wait for the gunpowder to roll on in. Welcome back everybody. We went ahead and did an hour-long test on this farm now and it turns out we got 6,450 gunpowder in just a single hour. You can see some of the gunpowder here, some more of it over here, and yeah, the other ones are pretty much the same. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. That's like, I think, uh, almost four shulker boxes full of gunpowder. Um, in just a single hour now, so that's like over four and a half times Faster than it was before so Absolutely fantastic. We got tons and tons of gunpowder we can get now um, So this will help us out 
in Total Chaos. And speaking of Total Chaos, now that we have the Creeper Farm done, uh, we're going to spend a little bit more time out here, but then we got to get over to Total Chaos and get some things created today because we got a whole bunch of dispensers in here as well as a whole lot of gunpowder, which I've already uh, <laughs> boxed up. But yeah, a whole lot of dispensers. We got to put down the fireworks part of Total Chaos. So we are now out of Total Chaos and placing down some dispensers because fireworks can be loaded into dispensers and shot out. And when they get shot out, once they get to the end, they go boom, which is what we want to see here at Total Chaos. Let me show you how we're going to make this happen and exactly what we want from this dispenser array. All right, row of dispensers is down. Now what? Well, we don't want all of these dispensers to shoot out at one time. That would be super annoying and would just guarantee that people like die very quickly to fireworks. Instead, what we want is we want these in to individually fire so that there's like a random chance of fireworks hitting the player and not like a guarantee. So we got to make a randomizer for each and every one of these. To do that, we're going to use some droppers. So we're going to place a dropper down here. Then we need a hopper. And there we go. There's our randomizer, pretty much. <laughs> uh, we just need a redstone comparator to take a signal out of here. And then we'll have this bit and three dust like this. And this is basically our randomizer. So the way it works is you fill in a, a non-stackable item, like for instance this shovel, into the dropper here. Then whenever you power this, the non-stackable will go into the hopper. This comparator will read out a signal strength of three, activating only this dispenser. So if I put in like some fireworks here, you'll see whenever I power this, fireworks shoots out and bam, there's a little explosion there. So that's great. Um, and then if I put in like a uh, stackable item, you'll see when I power this, it only outputs a signal strength of one every time. So by putting in a non-stackable with a stackable, like this, now it's a 50% chance that the dropper activates, or the dispenser activates and shoots out of fireworks. So right here, it didn't. Right here, it didn't again. Right here, not again. And there it did. So now it's a 50% chance of activating every time we power it. So that's pretty cool. And then as we add more items, like now if I add another item, now it's a 33% chance of activating because it's one out of three. Now it's one out of four. So now it's a 25% chance of activating. And now it's one out of five. So now it's a 20% chance of activating. And so in this way, we can sort of uh, individually manipulate the chances that a dispenser shoots out of firework. Um, and so I think what we'll do is we'll probably put in, we'll probably put in like nine items like this. Um, and so this will give a one out of nine chance of the firework shooting. So I can hit this a few times and it probably won't activate unless we get uh, lucky there. Perhaps twice in a row even. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, now it's a one out of nine chance and yeah, this will serve us well. So yeah, um, with that, uh, now we just have to basically repeat this pattern. So dropper, hopper, comparator, and dust like this. Um, and yeah, because the signal strength is three, it can't activate any side dispensers. So like, because the, like when there's a non-stackable in here like this, it outputs a single strength of three. See, even when this is active, it doesn't activate this uh, dispenser here because this dust is not active. So that's how we're going to individually manipulate it. And then basically all it, all we need beyond this is uh, like some redstone on top of these droppers here. And then this will be like attached to a clock elsewhere. And yeah, pulse periodically. And so that's how we're going to get the randomization. The other thing we need to consider about this is we don't want the player to be able to see the dispensers and like see all the redstone behind here so they can like see which one's firing when or whatever. Uh, we want this all to be sort of hidden behind a wall. And so I thought to myself like what block allows fireworks through but uh, the player can't see through. And I immediately thought powdered snow. So we got some powdered snow buckets here, and if I place these in front of the dispensers, obviously you can't see through the powdered snow. Uh, but it also, if we remove this and then put it back, allows fireworks to be shot straight through without impeding their movement in any way. So that's fantastic. That means we can just use this powdered snow 
and put this in front of all these dispensers. Uh, and the player can't see through it. The player won't be able to see any of the redstone back here. And it also, like, helps, if you're not wearing leather, to, like, freeze the player. Because obviously, you know, you start freezing if you, like, you know, walk into it. So it helps to, like, keep the player in the arena. Because otherwise, they'll start to freeze at the edge of the arena. So... That's pretty cool. Um, so, and it also, by the way, goes with the snow layer. So we got powdered snow and snow layer, and snow blocks up there. So, yeah, it's gonna be like a frozen hell world basically, <laughs> with lava above yourself. So, it works in that way too. Anyways, that's the plan for the fireworks. Let's get to it. All right, a little bit of prep work here. Placing using stone blocks. Not really sure why I went with these. They're kind of expensive, but they look kind of cool too. So, here we are. And let's be honest, everybody loves a good dispenser placement. Just listen in. You hear that? That's progress. And another one down, and another one down. A little more redstone dust. This man actually out here still placing, huh? So good. He's so good. I'm going to add this guy to the list of players I'm going to play Minecraft with this summer. <laughs> what am I even doing? What am I even doing? Look at me running into trees and stuff, man. So inspirational. Anyways, let's get to the end here. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see here, we now have some redstone down. So not only do we have the redstone here for the randomization of these dispensers here, we also have now connected up a sort of like zipper redstone pattern in the back here so that we... Instead of firing all these dispensers at one time, we actually are alternating the firing of each dropper, uh, which means that the dispensers also alternate, and that's in addition to the randomization. Uh, the reason I did that is because I figured we have 54 dispensers on each side, and even in a 1 out of 9 chance of the dispenser firing, because we have uh, the 1 out of 9 chance of the shovel uh being output to the hopper, that would still mean six would get fired on average per side if we fired all these at once. Um, so instead we're doing an alternating one. So only 27 fire at once now. Um, so that means we only have on average three per side, which are firing at any given time. And so that's a total of 12 for all the sides combined. So 12 fireworks every single time that the clock ticks on average. I think that should be pretty good and I have uh, also you know we have some repeaters here and then repeaters down here uh, which connect up the side which sort of alternate the uh, the timings a little bit can actually delay this a little bit more I think on this part there we go sweet so yeah these two sides this side and this side are connected up that side and that side are connected up and there's sort of like a master block that we have down this way right here this block controls everything, so if I put down a torch here, yeah, this actually powers everything all the way down to here. So, yeah, it goes all the way to the end, and the same over there. Um, so, now all we need to do is test this thing out. we got to test the rate of fire. Are 12 fireworks at once enough? Now, it might not always be, you know, 12, but, you know, on average, it'll be, like, around that amount. Um, so, is that too much? Is that too little? Because there's going to be other things. Potions, dripstone, arrows, flaming arrows coming into this arena. Not just the fireworks. So, we got to hook up a clock to this block right here. And then fill some fireworks into the dispensers. Because this thing is ready to start some initial testing. All right, everybody. So we're going to try this out for the first time. We put a couple of rockets in each and every one of these dispensers, as you can see here. So we should be able to run this for a little bit of time and see how the thing holds up. Uh, so let's see if we can make our way over here and ninja our way around here. And we're going to turn this on. We're going to jump down. We're going to eat something, and then we're going to run into the arena and see how it goes. Um, so, this is currently at 16 pumpkin seeds. Uh, so, I think it should be, like, every, like, 10 seconds-ish or so. So, let's try it out. Okay, let's see if we can survive in here. And how hard it is to dodge things. Okay, that was sort of like a cross T section. You can see some other fireworks going off here. 
There's one there. Okay. Yeah, good. This is sort of the rate we want. Okay, we haven't been hit by any of them yet, though. We got hit by that one. There's more over there. Okay. All right. In the middle here. We're good. I feel like at this rate, we have to be aware of it, but we can sometimes dodge it. Some of these are also flight duration one, which I'm realizing maybe we make all of them flight duration three so that they all reach, like, the middle. And you can't just dodge them. Okay, those are short. That's good. Okay, good here. Oh, go back away. Okay, dodge that one. Okay, dodging this side, dodging this side. Okay, hit again. We're gonna see if we can actually outlast this. Okay, no good there. Let's get to this side. Okay. Got a few of those. We're good. So we've been hit twice. We've, do we've gotten a little bit of damage done on us. Okay, gotta definitely have to dodge that one for sure. Okay, and remember, we're not going to be able to see where these, like, originate from, so it'll be a little bit harder with this one. Okay, that one was a direct hit. Another direct hit. Okay. Totally missed that. Alright. I feel like another one's coming. <laughs> yeah. I don't know which direction to look. And so imagine this, but you also have to look up and be aware of arrows and dripstone. See if we can avoid dying for it a little bit longer here. I feel like this is a good time to survive, though. Okay, we don't want to go towards that. And these are just the small ones. If we added more... Uh, okay, that was close. That was close. Yeah, if we added more of these... Like, more uh, breaks... Yeah, we would definitely die quicker. Okay, so there we go. So, yeah, we survived, like, an okay-ish amount of time on that, I would say. Probably... I would say probably have it just a little bit faster, but overall pretty good. Also would like to send a huge shout out to Hypno who came over and tested the firework portion of the game. His insight were, was very valuable and very much appreciated. So thank you, Hypno, and thank you for sacrificing yourself for the good of Total Chaos. Much appreciated, my friend. This whole segment will actually be up on Cub 2, so if you want to check that out, uh, head to the second channel. I'll provide a link in the description. And yeah, thanks again, Hypno. So I think we can safely say that the fireworks are not too overwhelming. We didn't want it to be too overwhelming. We wanted it to, you know, worry the player a little bit. And, yeah, them to not know, like, which direction fireworks are going to hit them from. Uh, but also have some ability to, like, move out of the way if you spot the firework in time. And I feel like that did that. So I'm happy with the fireworks the way they are now. Now it's time to move on to the potion and arrow aspect of Total Chaos. So you can see I've set up a couple of dispensers here. To sort of demonstrate what I'm thinking for this. So for the arrows in particular, I think what we'll have is I want to have sort of like two sets of, um, I guess, events happen in the game. So one set of events should be like individual dispensers. So like if I put in some arrows here, right, this dispenser will fire. If I just shoot this off a few times, you'll see there's a good like variety of like distances the arrow f like shoots. In this case, this actually hit the dispenser right there uh, once or twice, but in general, it shoots the arrow just barely over the first set of dispensers. So you can see it has a nice little spread here of arrows. You know, it's you know it's two or three blocks wide, two or three blocks deep, so it covers like this general area right here. Then I'd like to have sort of like lines of dispensers every once in a while, uh, and these would be. I just get this button back and these arrows back. These would be more like arrow barrages. So like if we put like a couple arrows in here, right? Like this. Like this. Let's pick these up. Like this. This one. This one. And this one. What we can do is we can actually like run like a redstone line down here. And then since this redstone line doesn't power this block, we can actually like activate this independently of the bottom bit. So if we put a button here, bam. You can see we have like a barrage of arrows that comes out that would basically hit anybody from about here to about here. Like pretty much guaranteed. So 
that would add to the chaotic element of the game, I think, pretty significantly. So we can just put more dispensers, you know, down here after we remove this button like this. So this would just basically go all the way down the line. So that's what I'm thinking for the arrows, like some barrages and some individual arrows firing from individual dispensers. Now for the potions, I think it would be a good idea to have the potions um, sort of like cover a bigger area and also last longer. And so the only way to do that is actually with lingering potions. So lingering potions, if you guys don't know, um, they are actually, well, I'll tell you what, let me, let me show you real quick. So we're back now with some lingering potions. We went and gathered some dragon's breath, pretty straightforward. And then we just combine that in a brewing stand with a splash potion to get these lingering potions. And these lingering potions honestly are one of the cooler items in the game, but they're sort of the forgotten stepchild of the potion family because they basically take a lot of time to craft uh, and time to brew up as well as being kind of expensive with the dragon's breath. But they are incredibly useful, especially for our uh, current uh, game we're making of Total Chaos. So, Lingering Potions, if you don't know, they actually have like an area of effect. See that potion cloud there? Yeah, that's nice. That's real nice. So, basically, if you step anywhere in this particle cloud here, you will get the effect. So, if I step into the cloud, yeah, I actually get the effect plus it reduces the size of the cloud. And you can see this better if I do F3 plus B. You can see the cloud slowly gets smaller as the lingering potion effect diminishes. And yeah, same thing here. So it starts out big and then it slowly gets smaller. But the point is it covers initially at least like a five by five area. And then if I, yeah, basically get the effect, it actually like jumps in until it eventually dissipates if you uh, stay in it too long. So. That's pretty cool, and you can also shoot these out of dispensers similar to, you know, regular splash potions. If I just come up here, and let's say I put one in here, like this. And we also get rid of some of the arrows here, because this won't be part of this. There we go. Cut, and go. Bam! You can shoot it out, and yeah, you see how much area it covers. It covers like a like six by six area basically until it slowly gets smaller so that's pretty awesome that's what we're going to want to have here and we want to have these again at like various distances and heights so that it covers a majority of the inside of this area if not like most of like the interior here so that is what we're going to do with these lingering potions should be pretty cool i think it should give us pretty good coverage so like if i step like a few blocks over here and then throw it like here yeah, so this whole area here is now basically totally covered, effectively. So that's pretty cool. So that's why we're using lingering potions. We get this sort of area of effect coverage and should be pretty good. Should be pretty good. I'm pretty excited about it. We can throw one over here, right? And now this whole area is basically covered uh, for some time. So that's pretty cool. I like that. And hopefully that will work well for us. But that's the plan for the arrows and the potions. Lingering potions and arrows at various heights and distances, and we've got to hook it all up with redstone. So, should be quite fun to make. Let's begin. All right, final little extended time lapse bit here, uh, which shows me building up a section of the that's going to be connected to the arrows that are at total chaos. These are the individually fired arrow dispensers we're connecting up here. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, you might notice we're actually building with jack o' lanterns. That way we have lighting, um, and yeah, we also. Yeah, have the ability to, you know, not have mobs spawn on top of this, because that would be a disaster if a mob exploded here, as you'll see once we uh, reveal the whole thing here. But basically, we're making the same thing we made down below, but in individual form. So, again, we need a randomizer, so we got the droppers, the hoppers, the comparators, and then, of course, we need the redstone dust on top of these jack-o'-lanterns right here that's going to activate the... Uh, dispensers put blocks on top to prevent you know things from falling into the hopper and then one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight and then we have a non-stackable in this case stone shovels that we put in each of the dispensers so again one out of nine chance for that thing to fire pretty straightforward just double checking everything making sure we're good to go then we go down two blocks to the next pumpkin and do the same thing because yeah having the Dispensers at different heights is basically going to create some distance separation in the arrows and things. 
Um, so that will be great for coverage in the arena. So dispensers plays down, dust on top. And then, of course, block on top to prevent stuff from falling in, just in case. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. And then, of course, the non-stackable in the form of the stone shovel. And that is one section of this done. And then it's just repeating this pattern again and again until, yeah, we get everything done. Obviously, a repeater down to connect everything. And, yeah, double-checking to make sure we collected all the the uh, scaffolding and stuff, but then just, yeah, simply place down more scaffolding, start the process over again, and then just keep doing that. And it's a similar process for the other uh, sections, so like the potion section, but just different placements uh, of the dispenser to get maximum coverage in the arena. Ladies and gentlemen, we are halfway to total chaos now. We got a hundred some more dispensers now placed strategically, and... Yeah, these are going to fire our arrows and potions. And luckily, we got the demo kid right over here. Look at him with his hard hat. Well, What's hello up, Scar? There. <laughs> How's it going, dude? How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Cub, Cub, you told me to come here and demonstrate something. I had no idea, like, you had this incredible, like, Halloween contraption. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be as spooky as Halloween, too, man. When it, Once it's done, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. Oh, my um, gosh, Cub. What is, what the heck is that? What's that? What's that? No, no. Over on the by the by the hat up there, or the the little house. It looks like a hat. What what about it? Oh, you trying to get me again? Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh shoot! I don't have an electron. Dang it! Oh, I didn't have my <laughs> potion on. Oh, dang it! You almost almost had me. Almost had me. <laughs> oh, I'm so. Oh god! I'm never gonna get you, Cub. Someday. Someday. Anyway, maybe, maybe. I'm doing what I'm told. Maybe. You told me to push buttons. Yeah, so we got buttons up there. I just want to demonstrate to people like that there's these are gonna like these these dispensers we have up here, these are gonna affect a large range of, of area. So if you press just press buttons up there, press those buttons I put on this uh, dispenser. Oh, you want me to do it? Am I ready? Yeah, send them. Ah, oh, sweet. Send it. Okay. There we go. Buttons are pressed being pressed. Keep pressing, keep pressing. A press. Apparently my arms are shorter than press. I thought they were. Okay. There we go. Okay, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, here yep. we go. Yep, there we go. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, you can see, yeah, wide range of angles. That one almost hit me. He almost got me. He almost got me. Oh, that one's close. That one's close. Perfect. I might not have got you with a uh, creeper, but I can maybe <laughs> get you with an arrow. Yeah, but yeah, you can see, yeah, quite a... Oh, I got one. I got I got hit. I got hit. I got it. But yeah, quite a range of uh, area of effect for these arrows. And we also got potions. So, Scar, if you want to fly down... Activate the potions. We can demonstrate. Activating got... potions. Yes. There we Fire. go. Fire. Fire. Oh, there we go. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, look at that. Look at that coverage. Look at that coverage. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> coverage. Thank you, Scar, for that. And uh, yeah, we're halfway there, guys. So still a little bit to go, but uh, we'll get there eventually, Scar. We'll get there eventually. This is amazing. So I hope that that clip there shows that we have pretty good coverage for the arrows and the potions here at Total Chaos. And we'll continue to work on the other two sides here in the near future. But for now, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Cub. Goodbye.